Hi, I'm Torquato Testa and all coming up on Dirt Trend Show. This week we talk about how the coronavirus is affecting the world of mountain biking. Yes, and we'll have an interview with Torquato Testa and we'll be hearing from Rick McLaughlin at the EWS. We've got all your riding action from the GMBN uploader plus this week's news and we're looking forward to the first round of the World Cup downhill. Ah! Yes, welcome to the Dirt Shed Show with me, Martin Ashton, and of course, Neil Donoghue. How are you, Neil? Good, thanks. How are you, Martin? I'm very well, thank you. Um, we've got a great show coming up, lots of things to get into. It's obviously a big week in cycling in the world. Um, but first off, I've got to make an apology. Last week in the news, I talked about Emil Johansson riding in Rotorua, the Crankworx event. Yep. Um, and I said he did a triple tail whip. Yes. He didn't do a triple tail whip. Uh, Mr. Shivago Wheelie Master got in contact and said it was an opposite triple so tail whip. Much harder. Much, much, much harder. Although yeah. it looks the same. I apologise, but that is incredible, isn't it? Very right. good. That's yeah, good yeah. stuff. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah, lots to come up. But before we get going, let's take a look at the news. So on with the news and the main news story this week. Well, it's the, the coronavirus is having a huge effect on sporting events and mountain biking events are being postponed or cancelled left, right and centre. Events from the Enduro World Series, Downhill World Cup, Cross Country and even the Cape Epic, which looked sure to go ahead, have been cancelled or postponed. So obviously really, really sad, but sounds like a necessary precaution for a virus that is wreaking havoc all across the globe. Next up in the news is a story about a man who can seemingly do anything, Mr. Brandon Semenuk. He signed for Subaru Motorsports USA to race alongside none other than Travis Pastrana. So it's not the first time you've seen incredibly talented, world famous mountain bikers give rallying a shot and best of luck to him. One of the few races that did go ahead this past weekend was the Australian Nationals, which Troy Brosnan took out in storm a few seconds ahead of Connor Fearon. Shana Hearn won the women's and congratulations to her. She was so close last year, just less than half a second, I believe, behind Tracy Hanna. So congratulations to both. Hopefully everyone's well at home and we can get the racing season started soon enough. Okay, top stuff. Well, there's lots going on this week, Neil. Um, the world is going through quite the issue with coronavirus. How is it affecting the world of mountain biking? Well, it's changing daily, of course, but obviously we've seen in Italy that uh, basically the Italian Cycle Federation saying, don't yes. go out and ride your bikes. Uh, I think it's got to, we've got to say it's important that in fact, it is affecting mountain biking, but the world is much bigger than us. Yes. And it's worth taking seriously. And just, you know, affecting mountain biking and racing is probably on the lower end of the scale of important, serious things. It really is, obviously, and definitely be taking your advice from your health organizations and taking it very seriously and staying safe. But while we're talking about mountain biking and uh, you asked about the World Cup, now look at this man. I head know. In his hands. G Atherton and they're on Instagram posting how he feels about, I'm sorry to say this, Neil, the first World Cup downhill being cancelled. It's, it is it's sad. It's it a disappointing. And there's lots of athletes that have put a lot of time into this. I've yeah. also got to think there's people like Poor old Jim. the injured people, like Tarni Seagrave, are like probably gutted, but also yeah. like, well, you know, hang on, I'm yeah. not going to be there anyway. Yeah, you never know. It might give them time to come back. Yeah. Um, G wasn't the only one. Miriam Nicole there, the world champion, not showing off the uh, rainbow jersey there in black. Yeah. Face and mood when you realise there won't be any World Cup next week. Oh, oh miserable. I've seen the, the Denim Destroyer is ready for action though. Well, you know what? Some people are seeing the funniest side <laughs> and the Denim Destroyer has gone with a face mask. But yeah. Um, yeah, obviously in denim, which I quite like. I like that a lot. Although that's the only denim thing in that shot these days. Yes, yes. I have heard that he's got some actual denim race pants being made. So they're not denim jeans. They are race pants, but they're in denim. Why? What do you think of that, Neil? Because I think that's probably controversial for you, isn't it? I think it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, look at this, I love this. Legend of freestyle BMX, one of the uh, absolute first guys on the scene, Bob Harrow, yeah. coming out with some of his classic artwork. Again, the face mask. The mouth guard, the racing mouth guard, I'm not quite saying. Can this trend take off? Apparently the old face marks don't do that much, but don't take my word for that, because I know nothing. <laughs> Go with what the real scientists are saying. 
Definitely. Before we go any further, let's have a little go at the old fail or send game. Oh, nice. Come. It's like being in the cinema, Mark. It is, yeah, look at this. Dropping in, look at that little bike. It's go amazing. On, go on, go on, go on. Is it's it a set? set. It's a set. Yeah, set. it's a one for. Yes. Nice. Here we go. Oh! oh. <laughs> look at the helmet! The top of his helmet's oh. off. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Send. No. Not a send. Yeah. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Yes! That was so close to being a fail. It was a bit of an overshoot, if anything. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh! Ooh, that was... That was bad. To the face. Come on. That Come was on. so fun. Where's that? Send. Complete complete send. send. Come on. Send! Nice. We've got a roll Well, we've now. had a few sends now, Mark. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was <bad> to <laughs> Oh man, oh that sounds terrible. <laughs> Fat bike. Yes. That was a nasty little jump. Fat send. Where's that? I recognise this. Oh, the worst. The roots. The roost. Oh, root, rooty roots. Oh my god. Oh, that's the second tree shoulder barge. Oh, oh it looks like it's in bad times there. <laughs> Go on, son. Go on, son. Send. Send. Whoa. It's close. A big soft yes, landing. Yes. <laughs> when the case is so bad, you can't actually call it a case. He didn't make the case. Go on. Yes. Come on. Like We're on a roll. The dust. Look at this place. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. no. <laughs> oh, gross. Oh, how's the bike? What? Oh, man, that went so wrong. It's three crashes in one. Amazing. We ended on a fail. It's oh. like 50 50 this week. Fails and sends, I reckon. But oh. very good. Thank you for sending those in. We do love seeing them. Um, send in your send of the week or your fails and bales to our uploader um, on the screen there in the description below if you want to play along. We love seeing your stuff. That's where you can give us your bike vault. Uh, you can show us your uh, GMB and kit that you're wearing. You can get involved in the show in lots of ways. So make sure you head over to the uploader and send us something. We'll take a look. Hex and bodges, hex and bodges, hex and bodges. So, Neil, you could, put, this week. you could put a donk on it. So I could go, hex and bodges, doink, hex and bodges, doink. Yeah, that makes it way better. <laughs> See his face. Darker. Oh my God. <laughs> um, we have got some great hacks and bodges. It's your chance to win a GMBN jersey, uh, just like that one there. Fits me nice. Um, very good uh, opportunity. So what have we got this week, Neil? First one, look at this. Genius, I love this. I but, love this but terrible. Oh, this is Brennan. Who drove two and a half hours up oh. to Scotland to ride his bike. What do you need to ride a bike? We need a bike, you need a helmet. You need some shoes. Shoes, he, and he'd worn sliders the whole way there. They're like flip-flops. So he's to make them work on the day, because they are not designed for bikes, he's gaffer taped them to his feet. And look, it works, he's riding. That is good. I mean, he saved the day. Oh man, that, oh, you'd waterproof be Waterproof as well, gaffer tape is waterproof. When I, used to, when I used to leave for a motorcycle trial when I was a kid and my dad was taking us to a competition, the thing we would all say to each other is helmet, gloves, boots. Yeah. Helmet, gloves, boots. Bike. Well, bike was on a trailer. <laughs> you know what? I have forgotten my bike when I've been somewhere though. So I yeah, yeah. Um, Brennan, that's very good, very clever, and we're glad you didn't miss out on your day riding. Next up, oh, I like this. It's a Wilf. Does some artwork. It is just a bit of artwork. It's quite simple. It's GMBM, which I really it's like. Not that simple. But do you know what I really like about it? I feel like that would wrap over the top of a helmet really nicely. Yeah. That's almost a helmet design. Yeah. I like it. I, like I really it. like it. I can see sort of the peak being down the bottom here and it wrapping over the back, GMB and over the wrap back See what you helmet. mean. But it's not going to be beaten because this is amazing. This is Will, who's riding the GT Sensor from Perth, Western Australia. It's got a RockShox Recon, which you can't yeah. get volume spaces for. So look, he's made one. This is an absolute genius. The so volume spaces are so simple. I literally yeah. did a video yesterday on just trying a load of different things. And all you do is take your top cap off and thread in this piece of plastic. So it's a really simple idea. And what does it do? What does it do? For the dummies like me out there, what does a volume space it do? It makes your fork ramp up more near the end. So for like aggressive riding, it, you basically don't bottom out quite oh, so okay. easily. Yeah. So it's a really simple way of tweaking how your suspension works. Mm. So it's a two minute change, but if you've got a fork that doesn't take them, you're stuck. 
Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Bit of dowel, bit of plastic tube. That, in my book, that's got to win. That's the best hack I've seen in a long time. Wow, that is Neil very impressed. Will. Well done, sir. Will you have you have won yourself a GMBN race top? Nice one. Congratulations. On its way to Western Oz. Um, I say it every week, but we love seeing your hacks and bodges. If you would like to send us one, then go to the uploader. We would love to see it. And you might win yourself a race jersey, so that's fair enough, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, come on. Well, Neil, you definitely like that one. Yeah. It's very good. But what about you guys out there? Let's put a poll up in the corner here above my head. Uh, let us know which one you think was best. And we're going to collect up a few of these ones you've chosen. Then we're going to get Doddy to mm. actually do it them himself and actually try and make these things that you guys are making. So is it the sliders? Is it the artwork or are you picking the volume spacer like Neil did? Let us know in that poll above my head. Okay, loads more to come on the show, including a banging bike vault this week. Yes. But if you would like to support us here at GMBN and get yourself a swanky shirt, check out our trail shirts. We've also got bundles there, big value bundles, and we've got shirts for kids, women, and men, all sizes. Yeah, it's all looking good over on the shop as usual. Um, right, still to come, from here, we have Pro Corner with Taquato Testa and his New Zealand Odyssey. Uh, and of course, like Neil said, the bike vault, which I'm very excited about today. Let's keep going. Ever heard of Taquato Testa, Neil? Of course. Yeah, fantastic slope style rider. rider. He had an absolute mare out in New Zealand because of coronavirus. Um, it's pretty cool. I got a chance to chat to him earlier on. So nice. check this out. And look, we've got the man himself here live on the Dirt Show Show. Tequato, how are you? Yeah, hi, hi everyone. I'm good actually now. I'm finally back in Italy. Yeah, so okay, tell us, tell us exactly what happened when you went over to Crankworks. How did it all unfold? Before leaving, we wrote to the embassy, Italian embassy, to just ask them if we were allowed to travel and to go through like New Zealand border and things yeah. like that. And also, we wrote Crankworks, so every, everything was okay, but as soon as we were there, they blocked us and told us that to stay in self-isolation. Oh man. So it was um, kind of um, weird because after this, also we, like the first day we were totally normal, just uh, in the afternoon, the organizer of Crankworks called me and said, Torquato, go back to the hotel and you need to stay in self-isolation. <laughs> And from that moment was really, really weird, the situation, because we tried to call everyone, really, the embassy, the New Zealand government, the, um, the health uh, like uh, things in New Zealand, but everyone was like confused and not sure about our situation. So for two days, we stayed in the hotel. After three days, we received that news that we couldn't participate uh, to Crankworx, but actually the problem wasn't uh, from the New Zealand government, beca because New Zealand government said that we need to respect the self-isolation rules. Yes. So, so how, so what was the, um, what, you must have had a whole run planned, right? Yeah, for sure. Like I, I prepared all the winter for this contest because it's the first contest of the season. So, um, like for sure, I I planned exactly my run, and I was because it, it was already my fifth year in uh, Rotorua yeah. for uh, slope style. So I already knew the course and everything. So I was like really prepared. And also after last season that I ended third in the Crankworks um, uh, World Ranking. Um, I was like uh, really focusing on doing well yeah. also this season. So, like not participating at this con, this the first stop uh, means for me like uh, probably it's like uh, I don't know what will happen then in the next uh, contest because uh, you know like FMB and um, all the crank course stop are really it's like the point system it's really really severe and uh, you need to stay on the top to stay in the yeah. Tour. So yeah, it's difficult. So what, what is life like in Italy now you're back? I mean, can you go out on your bike? How close can you get to your friends? What's it like? From just the day that I came, they wanted to uh, like put on a like red zone, like all my region. I live yeah. in Lombardy, uh, so the north of Italy. But 
After that day, they put all Italy in the same situation. So all Italy is kind of considered a red zone. Right. So everyone should stay at home. Like it's like it's not a um, like a, a must, but uh, like to respect all the other people, you have to stay at home. And for example, you can go out for a walk just like to breathe some some fresh air for sure. If you need like to go to the supermarket, you can go to the supermarket. Uh, for like uh, for work, you can go work, but uh, you you cannot like go for example to like uh, see your friends and uh, or your girlfriend just because uh, <laughs> you miss them. Yeah. You cannot de- do that. Yeah, sure like Uh, for the first ne- 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 necessities, you can go. For like um, other things, you cannot. So actually, I I can still ride my bike because I'm a professional athlete. So I like yeah. if I'm go I'm going out with my bike, I'm working. I'm kind of working. So yeah. for me, it's allowed. But for regular people, they almost cannot do that. Wow, it's so crazy. And I, I, I guess everyone, uh, everyone around the world is going to experience this in some way or another. These restrictions, it's really hard. Um, it's, it's, crazy. Yeah. You're, it's crazy to hear your story. I'm so grateful we got to talk to you about it because it's, um, it's a wild story with the New Zealand trip. And I really hope that you get um, some kind of resolution with FMB so you can have a really good season from this point hopefully there's some events <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yeah Thank you. um okay before we go though we've got our hot four questions for you Torquato. this is how we judge what kind of mountain biker you are i guess something like that so the first yeah. question is what and where is your favorite climb <laughs> um, <laughs> you don't climb like, you don't this climb is a- Yeah, this is this is an art question for a slope style mountain bike athlete uh, <laughs> because uh, I usually don't climb with my bike too much. But uh, yes, I'm I'm going to like pedal during the weekend. I'm not really expert on climbing, but I would say there is a a trail uh, here uh, close to Lago Maggiore yeah. uh, near Varese, and uh, the the place is called Sentieri dei Lupi del Cornaggia. And it's uh, <laughs> and uh, like it's it's really fun. They have uh, a lot of trails there, uh, so like I I will I usually go there training with my my personal trainer. Yeah. So it's it's pretty well, fun. Okay. And what does and translate the name of that trail? What does it call? What is it in English? <laughs> uh, it's impossible to translate. It's like means trails of uh, wolf of Cornaggia. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah, uh, what and where is your favorite descent? Um, uh, that's that's a good question. I I would say uh, my favorite descent it's in Whistler Bike Park and it's uh, the Dermersen because it's yeah. like the most uh, close uh, trace to a slope style course. Yeah, yeah, it's great there. I, um, hopefully we can see you there this year because um, I'm so excited about going to Whistler again. I cannot wait. Yeah. Um, okay, which rider do you admire the most and why? Um, actually, I like you mean for mountain bike rider or like oh, athlete? Athlete. In, in it can be F- anything. Yeah, athlete would be okay. cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that uh, I'm inspiring now, like this in this uh, moment of of my life. I'm not inspiring myself from mountain bikers, but from skiers. Oh. Uh, I'm inspired by Henry Carlo, that is a skier from Andorra, and uh, he's like really creative and uh, really express the freestyle movement for like what I think yeah. about that. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. It's different. It's, it... But but like, go on. But like, if you if you just ask me like what I'm like, I was inspired in the in the past. Probably was expired by most of the the um, like the old dog of, of uh, freeride mountain bike. Yeah. Like um, Eggy, uh, Eggy or Karsorg uh, or Paul Bass uh, from New World Disorder yeah, right. periods. Yeah, yeah. No, I've got you. Yeah. I've got you. <laughs> um, and is there? I'm sure there's not many tricks you can't do. But is can you name something you wish you could do better on your bike? For sure climbing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for sure climbing, but um, also like uh, the past few years I was really, really focused 
on slopestyle. Yeah. So I almost forgot uh, about downhill and freeride mountain bike. But I would love to come back because I started like riding my bike doing a uh, free ride. Yeah, yeah. So I would love to really be better on that side. That's cool. Perfect. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you a lot, Martin. Bye. He's a fun dude, isn't he? Good stuff. I like it a lot. Mm. God, what a mission though. Imagine going all the way to New Zealand and not being able to ride. Uh, what a nightmare, yeah. Oh, terrible. Um, thanks uh, to Quieto for joining us there. It was absolutely cool to have you on the show. Very good. Um, should we do caption contest? Let's do it. Last week was that shot of Rich with yeah. the big hat on. Yeah, he looked, he looked amazing. Good. <laughs> no. uh, what Corn we got? Cornish Cactus says, top tip to save your pads on those long descents, fit an air brake. Oh, I get it. Hat. Ah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Danny Pryor Doyle says, Jolly Richard, gormless captain of the GMBM party boat. <laughs> Whoa. Let's grab the prize. Uh, right. I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. And Nick uh, Gotron, actual footage of Rich's reaction to Henry falling off half a metre into his run. <laughs> half a metre, yeah. I think that's the winner because it gives us another chance to see Henry's crash. <laughs> Which Henry loves. He wants to see this on that. repeat, Oh course. man, that's so bad. Um, and I think that's probably what Rich looked like. Yes, you are a winner. There mm. is your prize. Neil, you can send it on the way. Don't throw that. Um, right, we've got the bike vault to come, but before we get to that, let's speak to Rick McLaughlin from EWS with... Mm, some news. Some more of that news, yeah. So Rick, crazy times, man. Things are getting cancelled everywhere. Explain what's been going on for you in the last, well, 24 hours. Yeah, it's been a very, fairly busy 24 hours, Martin, but crucially for us, round one and round two are only postponed. They're not cancelled. We've shifted them to the end of November. We're staying positive. Um, our South American organisers are some of the most excited event organisers that we have, and for them, having those rounds at the end of the year is a big deal. Very excited, and we're just sort of rolling with the punches at the minute. Yeah, because I mean, I guess where we don't know where this is all going, but like you say, um, it's all about when the races are going to be. We're not when the races aren't going to be. Um, so uh, what um, what do you think this does to the season in terms of the races them in themselves? Because some people have going to been trying to peak uh, with their fitness for this very moment and now all of a sudden it's gone and they're going to have to change tactics well yeah I mean it's interesting for us to talk about as pundits obviously I mean on one hand everything's changed and on another hand nothing's changed really I mean the EWS off season is about the shortest out there in terms of mountain bike racing so riders have more time to prepare more time to train I guess what we're going to see big differences is in different countries where lockdowns apply and stuff. But even then, we're seeing you know places like Spain lockdowns 15 days or so. I think so. It's all uh, it's all still up in the air at the minute. Um, but I mean that slight extension to the off season that can be a great thing if you're training as well. Yeah, and it seems strange to ask it, but I guess I've got to. Is there anyone? that you can think of, is there anyone who's going to actually benefit from this change because it's going to suit their riding style because the races are going to be in different weather conditions or, or something like that? Is there someone who's going to actually be thinking, you know what, this could work for me? Well, in terms of the elite men's field, I mean, we talked about whenever I was visiting yourselves about how there's five or six guys that are really in the running this year. The only question mark that really hung over that was Eddie Masters because he wasn't that long back in the bike. Now, he won a qualifying event at the weekend in Mammoth down in New Zealand. So that's something that's a few more weeks back on the bike for him. It's a few more weeks getting up to that race pace. So I'd say he's someone who could benefit from this. Coming up on the channel this week. Yes, we've got some great vids coming for you, including how to build a berm. Um, that's good to know when you get it right. Fantastic. And I did a video, problem solved, how to lose weight mountain biking. Good stuff. Um, we've got a video on Saturday following the medical team in Andy Pacifico, the team that I know well, good on them, Nico and team. Yes. Uh, so the boys this year showed what goes on. So those uh, guys and girls, yeah. really important for that race, obviously. Oh. And then we've got a preview to this year's Injury World Series. Oh my God, I cannot wait. Uh, all coming up on the channel this week, but now it's time to get into the bike vault. Get the bell.
First up, this is Josh's Transition Sentinel. Uh, location, my house. <laughs> Nice. Ooh, look at that. It's well, all... I think that's more than that. Neil. I think, I think, I think that's it's more than that. It's very black with a gold chain. Or is that a rusty chain? I can't tell. Yeah, no, like that's it. a gold chain. Uh, rock shots up front. Drop her on it. It looks like a fun bike to me. Super nice to start. Like it a lot. Oh, Next up. Oh! <laughs> uh, Phil on, with his Trex Flash in Twizzle, oh, New Zealand. Oh, nice. Nice. Riding along the Twizzle River track with my two-year-old daughter riding shotgun. You've got one of those seat things for I your bike, similar, mine's you? different, mine's a Mack ride, that's the yeah. kids ride shotgun, I believe. They're yeah. the best inventions ever. Love kids can it. literally bomb along and they feel like they're riding, it's holding on to bars. I've got to, haven't I? Come on. Super nice, like that a lot. <laughs> Next up, oh, a bit of purple. A purple fat bike, the Kona Wazo. Oh man, those spokes are I was going to say, they've really gone in with the grips, the stem, <laughs> the spokes. Oh, that's a lot of purple, man. This purple dinosaur has been updated with a dropper post. And where's that, Neil? Where is it? And a Manitou Mastodon, uh, Springdale, Arkansas. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Blake would be all over that, we know that. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, like this. Yeah. Although, if it was me, I have something weird about me. I always like, if I've got two bottle cages and one bottle, it's got to go in the other one, I'm afraid. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. No, that's where I'd put it, because that's like forwards. Um, that's in break, you know? Stop. It's a super fun, comfortable tie hardtail. I don't know what frame it is. Oh, I love a hardtail. That's where it's at for me. I, I'm really got a big thing about titanium bikes. Yeah. I would really like a titanium hardtail. Yeah. Let's um, sort that out. Let's get Neil on a titanium tire tail. What are you giving this one? I would go super nice because it's tight hard. Even though we don't know what it is, no name brand. Love it. Whoa, my super God. eight. Look at this. I've ridden one of these. That looks tiny, that one as well, doesn't it? What is going wow. on with the shape of that? That's a kid's bike. Uh, this must be a, a small version. That is weird. It almost looks like it's been photoshopped. But it's got a big seat, massive forks. Is that like the thing that Josh Bender rode? No, it's a Santa Cruz Super 8. Wow. You could fit a Coke can in that hole in the swing arm. Oh my and God. And the swing arm was so wide that when I rode it flat pedals, I absolutely skinned the inside of my cars. <laughs> uh, it looks disgusting, I have to say. Uh... <laughs> It's, got, it's nice. It's not even that. It's, it's nice. not even nice. It's nice, <laughs> Neil. Uh, whose was that? Uh, this is Harris. Harris, I like it. Mm. Next up. Beautiful. Track slash 9.8. It's, like it's like a green, dark green. What is the chain ring on that? I don't recognise it. It looks cool though. Yeah. Oh, it's got a SRAM axis. SRAM Rear axis Mac. on it. That Come is on. a lovely looking That's bike. That's a banger. It's a lovely picture as well. Super yeah. nice. That's Next up. Whoa, nuke proof. It looks like it's got yellow oh, tyres. Tan walls. Why? I love tan walls. Why the tan walls? Love them. It's a 2019 Mega Pro C. 27.5, I think. Nah, say. man. Nah. It looks like a large frame. It's got the big old triangle on top tube. That is absolutely nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just this is a pedder. It says just fitted new tan wall tires. You know what? If I look past the tan wall tires, it's an absolutely sick bike. <laughs> uh, but I can't. Well, I, well, it's up to you. But I mean, I'm, I'm I love more. tan walls, but they don't suit every bike. No, no. It's nice. nice. That's it. We're out of the bike vault. No, we're not. <laughs> we're in. Look at that. It was a slow loader. It it's was a, a slow that loader. That is an Orbea rayon with all the purple bits on it. It looks like a freshie as well. Yeah, that's lovely. Well, it's freshly cleaned and polished after a ride. This is Sam's bike, 2020, brand spanking, got Shimano X2R in it. Come on. Of lovely. course, the correct answer. Very is nice. nice. Um, and I believe we've got one more Mondraker. Look at that. Gabriel's uh, 2020 oh. brand spanking as well. Yeah. Mondraker Super Foxy in Stuttgart, Germany. Um, it says it's a dream build. Really happy with how it turned yeah. out. Yeah. And it rides absolutely incredible. Yeah. More SRAM axis. People are pushing the boat out. Over this to week. you. Neil. Come on. Love it. Love it. Great bike vault this week. Thank you very much for sending in your bikes. We get tons of them, but don't do. think we don't look. We look at all of them and it's so hard to pick what's going in the show. Some great bikes in there. Yeah, you should send yours in. Um, some horrors as well, <laughs> like the Santa Cruz Super 8. <laughs> <laughs> there are some horrors um, that we hide from you. But thanks for sending them in. Get involved in the uploader, like I said. Um, great show, Neil, fun. Yeah, nice one, Mark. Yeah, shame about some of those cancellations, but don't despair. Mountain biking's still happening, and remember, you've got to stay safe. 
and look after yourself. Um, Absolutely. It's difficult times. Yeah, don't forget, we'll be putting out all our content as usual, so loads of stuff coming up. Uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Yeah, like, love and share. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week.